What's up everyone, Michael Wolverine here with another video. So this is my top 10 most memorable video games. So I was tagged by Total Level for this video. There's like a YouTube challenge going around and uh, you tag three people at the end and then they're supposed to do the video and then tag three more people and then so on and so forth. <clears throat> so Total Level, um, he's a pretty cool guy. He makes a lot of um, different unboxing videos and just uh, talking about his collections and he does make a lot of um, little sketches right before the intros of his videos so they're pretty funny um, he's a pretty creative guy and he's really cool so uh, go check out his channel I'll put his link in the description below but uh, Total Level thank you for nominating for nominating me for this challenge and uh, I'll go and get started so a couple things number one these aren't going to be in any particular order um, I couldn't really figure out how to rank them. They're just going to be my top 10 most memorable games that I could find in my collection. And then also, there's not going to be 10. I cheated a little bit. I got 11. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first one we got... Uh, sorry. I don't know how that got in there. Okay, for real this time. We got Zelda Breath of the Wild. So as you can see, I don't have this complete. I just have it loose, um, kind of unfortunate, but <clears throat> so why is this my most, one of my most memorable games? Well, first off, this game came out uh, right when the Switch launched. And of course I didn't get a Switch right away just because they were so hard to find. Um, but my birthday was that year and it's in October. So that was about, I wanna say six months after the Switch had launched and um, so for my birthday that, that year, I ended up buying a Switch uh, when I was able to find one. So I was pretty lucky there. And um, I was also going through a lot of like life changes. I was going through a divorce and I was selling my house and stuff like that. So um, I just, I needed to get an, an escape and this game was that for me. So I, um, I actually had beaten it initially on, um, on the Wii U. But when I bought the Switch, there really wasn't much out at the time. If you guys remember, it was literally like Zelda, Mario Kart, and then a bunch of random sports games and a few other things. So um, I picked this up because it was really the only other thing besides Mario Kart to play at the time. And I just got lost in it once again. I ended up completing it and just absolutely loving this game. I mean, obviously Zelda Breath of the Wild is a classic. But it's just a game I needed at the time just to take my mind off of everything going on with my life. Um... And yeah, I mean, I'm in a great place now, so I'm really appreciative of where ha things have gone. So you guys ever go through those tough times, just remember, there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There always is. Um, but yeah, video games are a great way to escape from the, you know, the life, you know, things that happen. Um, and yeah, Zelda Breath of the Wild, not much I can say about it, but definitely a game that helped me. So another one is Pokemon Fire Red. So not really specific to fire red but more i'm talking about pokemon blue so for me i didn't really know about pokemon initially and when i got into it or kind of discovered it i was rem i remember i was going to like a birthday party and i was riding with one of our friends and he had a game boy color and pokemon blue and he let me play it on the ride to the birthday party and i just remember like as soon as i started playing it i just got hooked it was like nothing I'd ever played before and just it sucked me in. I couldn't put it down. I literally played it the entire time we were at this birthday party and I just, I had to get the game. So I, I asked my parents for it for my birthday that year. Of course they were, you know, great and got it for me. Um, don't have that game anymore, but I do have Fire Red, which is all I really had to show a Pokemon game in that, you know, era. But, um, but yeah, Pokemon Blue, I mean just sucked me in a game like I'd never played before. And uh, yeah, just always remember that. <clears throat> All right, so next one, I got The Suffering. So why is this on my list? Well, <clears throat> I didn't actually have this game growing up. What I had was a demo disc. You know, those like demo discs that would come in um, kind of Xbox magazine or PlayStation had them too. And basically I got the demo disc and it had The Suffering on it and a couple of the games. And so one night, one of my friends who lived down the street was over at my house and it was kind of dark, kind of late. And we popped in the demo disc and they had a demo for the suffering. 
And, you know, you play, like, you know, first half of the game, first little part of the game, whatever. And, like, you know, we were just freaking out. We were scared to death. Couldn't even, like, get through it. We're just like, oh, my gosh, this game was freaky. So we get to the end, and, of course, the demo stops, you know, when you when you aren't able to progress anymore. And my friend goes, he had to go home, and he wanted me to walk him home. And I was, like, scared myself, but I was like, okay, I'll walk with you. So I walk all the way down the street, and he didn't really live on my street. It was kind of like an adjacent street or whatever. So we go to the street that he lived on, walked him all the way to his house, and then I had to go back to my house by myself. So the whole time I'm, like, looking over my shoulder, just freaking out the whole time. But, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll never forget that about this game. And I was always curious to see what the actual game is. I, I did, obviously, I picked it up um, recently, and, and it, it's pretty fun. It, it's kind of like a third-person action game. It's really not as scary as it was when I was, like, I don't know, 13 years old when I first played it. But, um, yeah, The Suffering. All right, next one, Classic No Mercy. So this game, I mean, this game just my brothers and I just sunk tons of hours into this game i mean we loved the wwf growing up and this game came out at the right time and it's just it's a fantastic wrestling game still to me the best wrestling game of all time no one none of them have matched this um but yeah we just you know spent tons of hours tons of time just loving every minute of this game you know the story mode the different matches the creator wrestler and the survival mode just all those different things just a fantastic time. And I always remember that, you know, my brothers and I getting around playing this game. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. So no mercy. That's another one. All right. The next one I got Fable. So <clears throat> I remember Fable came out, I think a little bit before my birthday, the year this came out. Um, I don't know. can't remember when it was probably early 2000s. And I remember getting it. And not really knowing anything about it, just kind of like, oh, that looks cool. You know, and I asked for it for my birthday and, and, and I got it. And um, I just remember like just completely getting hooked on the game. And I remember there was this like video of the game on another game I had. You know how like back in the day, like those Xbox games would have videos or demos of other games. So I forget where that video was, but I remember watching it and they, I think the guy who created it was talking about how you know, your character will change as you like do different things in the game. And I didn't even know that at the time when I got the game as I was just so fascinated by it. And of course this game is just, you know, it, it, it might not have aged the best to be honest with you, but I do still really like this game. Um, it, it's a really fun action RPG. Um, you know, it has a lot of, you know, just choices and you can kind of be good or evil. So it's just, it's a lot of fun to go back and, and replay it as a hero or as a villain um, and just get a different experience. So Fable, great game. Uh, definitely one that will always stick with me. All right, so the next one is going to be Guitar Hero 2. So <clears throat> this one, you know, it's a little sad why this one is a really meaningful game to me. Not specifically this version of the game. I actually owned it on Xbox 360 at the time. But um, this came out, I want to say, right before I went to college. And so when I went off to college, you know, I took my Xbox 360 with me and all my games and I would play in the dorm with, you know, my friends and stuff. And uh, I had one friend and he was amazing at the game, way better than me, but um, he could always beat me, always kick my ass. <clears throat> and so we played and he had about five or six high scores on all the hardest songs. And I could do the songs. Like, I could play them on expert, but I couldn't beat his score, right? Well, in the summer, of course, you know, in between semesters, you go back home and then we would come back to school for the next semester. Well, unfortunately, he passed away uh, the summer that we were um, in between our first year of college. And I remember I had his I still had his scores on the game, you know, and I could never beat him. And, and honestly, I didn't want to beat him because it's like that was like a memory of him, you know, still on that game. So it was always pretty cool to me and pretty special. I, I wish I still had that Xbox and the game, but. You know, I don't, but I, I still have that memory, which won't ever go away. So that, you know, it, it's pretty sad. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it just was, it was kind of cool. It was just kind of a nice way to, to remember him. Just, you know, us playing it together and just having those scores and seeing his name. It was just like, it's cool, you know, so. All right. Hard transition, but <clears throat> let's go with the next one. We got GoldenEye 007. So, you know, this one, I mean, what can I say? It's an absolute classic game. I remember my parents picked this up, like, 
right up to Christmas. It was weird. It was like we got our Christmas presents, and then like a couple days later, my mom came home from the store with this game. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it was just like, you know, when she was Christmas shopping, they were like, oh, hey, you know, Golden I Double Seven, that's going to be the game. And, and it wasn't out at the time. I, I don't remember. But never, nevertheless, this game just completely hooked us when we started playing it, my brothers and I. And then, you know, my friend across the street, my best friend growing up, he and I would play this game all the time. He'd come over to my house and we would just try to beat all the missions on Double O Agent. You know, I do the multiplayer matches, just all kinds of stuff. Just always had fun playing it. And I always remember my mom would get so mad at us whenever we would shoot someone without a gun. So, for example, in this game, you know how, like, in Call of Duty and stuff, you always start out with a gun? Well, GoldenEye, you don't. You have to go pick up a gun. So if someone spawns camps you and you don't have a gun, they can just kill you right away. You have no way to defend yourself. So my mom would yell at us, you know, make sure they have a gun, let them get a gun. And, you know, I don't know. She just didn't like the idea of us killing someone without a gun. So I always remember that too. But um, yeah, GoldenEye Double Seven, great game, obviously. All right, next one is Resident Evil Code Veronica X. So <clears throat> not the GameCube version, but the PlayStation 2 version is is my story, my memory. Um, so one year, I forget what year it was, we were going school shopping, you know, for clothes and stuff. And my parents had given us, given us some money and I was like, hey, so if I don't spend all my money on clothes, can I use it on something else? And my parents were like, okay, fine, yeah, you can, but make sure you get, you know, a pair of shorts, a pair of, you know, shirt, shoes, whatever. And so we went to the mall and they gave us this money and they told us to buy some clothes and then whatever's left over, we could get what we wanted with. So I bought the cheapest shoes, shirt, shorts, pants, whatever. I just bought the cheapest stuff I could find just so I could have a little bit of money left over so I could buy something. So I went to, uh, there was a game store in the mall at the time and I went there and I picked up Resident Evil Code Veronica X for the PlayStation 2. And I remember like taking it home and the night I got it, it started raining when I got home. So I pop popped it in the PlayStation and the, the night it was raining, it was dark, it was, I think it was cold outside, I don't know, maybe it wasn't, but I, in my mind I think it was. And it was just like the perfect night to play a scary game. And I just remember like, you know, the lightning going off and just like the darkness and then just me being on edge. I mean, it was just a great experience. And uh, I really do love this game. Uh, I don't know if it's the most popular in the franchise, but I do have a lot of fond memories of this game. Um, so definitely pick it up if you guys are interested. <clears throat> All right, next one, absolute classic, but Zelda Ocarina of Time. So again, this one is, for me, it was Christmas morning, forget which year, probably 98, and woke up, opened my presents, one of them under the tree was Zelda. And I, I wasn't, didn't really know about Zelda too much, I just kind of knew of the name, but I never really played a game. A Zelda game much. I think we had an NES and played the NES version, but I was like three years old, so I vaguely remember it. Anyways, but I would play this one, and I just, you know, fell in love with it. Just couldn't put it down. It's just a classic. I mean, I don't know what else I can say about it. But for me, my memories... So we used to have this little VHS tape that we would record us playing video games on. And I wish I still had this tape... Either we lost it or we recorded over it. I don't know what happened, but there wasn't anything cool on it. But it was just us playing video games. Like it wasn't, you, we weren't even in the video. It was just the screen of us playing the video game. And I remember putting a ton of hours on Ocarina of Time and recording it on a VHS tape. Just for whatever, just because we could do it, you know. But um, anyway, I always thought that was cool. And yeah, this was one I, I'll never, never forget the memories I have of this game. All right, I got two more guys. So here is Need for Speed Most Wanted. So, <clears throat> again, not the GameCube version, but I did pick this up initially on Xbox 360. So, in high school, we had this, like, um, little party after um, graduation. And basically, they took us to, like, um, I forget what the place was called, but it was one of those, like, you know, arcades with, like, rides and stuff. And then, you know, we go after graduation and, you know, you just hang out with your friends and you know, have a little party and it's kind of like a safer thing than like letting kids, you know, go out and get drunk and all that stuff. So just kind of a more safer way to have fun after you graduate high school. So <clears throat> I went to that party and they had door prizes. So you would get these tickets and you would put them in the different door prizes. And one of them was a $100 uh, Best Buy gift card. 
So I ended up winning uh, the gift card. And the next day I went to Best Buy and I was looking through the 360 games to pick, pick a couple out. I think I bought Crackdown, um, Fusion Frenzy 2, and this. And <clears throat> the funny thing was, I really wanted Crackdown. That was the game that I was excited to play. But honestly, I didn't really like it. Kind of sucked. Wasn't into it. You know, I, I just didn't get into it. But this game right here, not this one, but, you know, the Xbox 361 was the game that just, like, hooked me. Like, I just fell in love with that game. Loved it. It's amazing. Still to this day, this is the, in my opinion, the best uh, Need for Speed game. Whatever console you played on, it's, it's just a great game. But um, I just always remember, like, I didn't even think anything of it when I bought it. I was just buying it just to have it. Just like, oh, I can get it, you know. And I just, it was the one I wanted. Or it was the one I ended up playing the most. It's just kind of funny. All right, guys. Last one here. Halo Combat Evolved. So here's my story about Halo. So my brothers and I growing up, of course, like everybody, I'm sure, you know, you trade in your older systems to get the newer systems. So at the time we had a PlayStation 2, or no, I'm sorry. We had a um, Nintendo 64 and a PlayStation 1. And, um, you know, I think we had probably 20 games from each or, for each or something like that. And uh, we're like, we really wanted to get a PS2. But also at the time, the Xbox was out. But we didn't really know anything about the Xbox, so we're like, we're going to get a PS2. So we took our N64 and our PlayStation to GameStop, traded all of it in, all the games, all the car, memory cards, all, all the controllers, everything. And we got enough money to buy a PS2, and each of us get three games. And I think we got a memory card and an extra controller. So... About a week or two later, my cousins did the exact same thing. I think they had a Dreamcast, though. So I think they had a Dreamcast and a Nintendo 64. So they, they did the same thing and went to GameStop. The only difference is they got an Xbox. And I was actually with them when they did it. They got, I forget what two games they got, but I know one of them was Halo. And I remember when we got back to their house and they popped in Halo, I just immediately knew I made a mistake. Because this game was like nothing I'd ever seen before. GoldenEye brought the, or popularized the first person shooter on the home console. This game perfected it. Like, there was nothing like Halo back in that day with the cooperative and the graphics and the controls. And I mean, it was just like, I just, I knew, I knew I messed up. I knew I was like, we should have got an Xbox. You know, and the PS2 is a great system, don't get me wrong, but I just, this game was so different from anything I'd seen. And uh, I regretted it, but of course I ended up getting one eventually and, and I have one now, so it's all good. But yeah, I, I won't forget that story. I won't forget that memory about this game. And I just, that's why I think, I just love this game so much, but. All right guys, so that's it. So for my three nominations, <clears throat> I'm gonna nominate Juliet Juliet India Mobile. So if you haven't got, if you guys haven't checked out his channel, um, he does a lot of, like, uh, he's done some BGM unboxing, some retro game treasures, and he does a lot of, like, streaming and stuff. He also did a really cool video recently about the Polymega. He unboxed uh, the one he got, and I think he's probably going to unbox some more of it if he gets some more modules. So go check out his channel. He's got a really cool really cool channel, and uh, he's a great guy, too. The next one is going to be Mike, T Mike Tendo. So Mike Tendo is, um, <clears throat> you know, he puts a lot of effort into his videos with his editing, like, the guy's amazing. Like he just does a great job. He's, he's also a great artist. He's got a really cool logo that he's drew, he drew himself and he has an awesome like game room setup. So hopefully one day he does a game room tour cause it's really awesome. Um, so go check out his channel. And then the last one I'm going to nominate is ballistic coffee boy. So ballistic coffee boy, um, does these like epic unboxing videos where he just compiles like seven or eight and they're like an hour long. So if you guys love unboxings, great great videos to watch the other thing he does that's pretty cool is he does a lot of like the i don't want to say like um like the more obscure like retro gaming like he did a lot of unboxings on the atari jaguar talking about some jaguar games and i think recently i saw he had a video about the odyssey 2 so if you like some of that like older or just like obscure stuff that no one really talks about too much go check out his channel and um yeah so i'll put the links of all three of these guys juliet juliet india india mobile 
uh, Mike Tindo and uh, Ballistic Coffee Boy. And then Total Level, appreciate you nominating me for this again. I'll put all three of their uh, links to their channels in the description. And uh, for the rest of you guys, I appreciate you watching and checking out the video. If you guys want to participate in this challenge, go for it. Um, thanks for stopping by.